I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Close the highway now, or let me use this footpath. You are illegally obstructing me. I'm not obstructing you, you sir. I'm telling you to be sensitive to the wishes of the dead. I can do that, and I will do that. So you put your camera no right. away and you leave the no scene. You have no right to close. Leave the scene, to sir. To me off a footpath that is open. Leave the scene. I'm asking you. CP89. 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 You have Mount Wellington Mount. Police Station. You okay. You know that your activities are unlawful. Get your hands off me. Sir, I don't have my hand on you. You did a minute ago. You're in the area. What? You're obstructing the cordon. I'm obstructing... Obstructing what? A road? I'm not obstructing anything. Excuse me, can you explain what these people are doing walking? I can't. Inside your cordon. I them. They must live here. Just put your camera away, thank you, sir. I don't have to take the thing. I'm not touching it. You are touching pushing it away because right you're filming source. someone's children without their consent. <laughs> See? They live here. You're okay? an idiot. They need to get here. On a public road, I can film anything I like. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to ask my sergeant what he wishes to do with you. What you should do... Sir, I'm on the phone. Please well, I don't really that, give a okay? shit. Just keep your language down. There's children behind you. Yeah. Really? Yes. There are. We probably don't want to be filmed. You just crossed to the far side of the road, sorry, sir. Yeah, the footpath's hey, closed over um, This guy's um, Wally. 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 Cameraman who's filming everything. Yeah. Cameraman who's filming everything. Yeah. yeah, they don't have a camera filming everything. Well, though, there's sir, no uh, reason to stop me. And the, the, the man ended up calling up the sergeant on his walkie-talkie, called, he called Jeff a Wally. Um, he didn't act impartially at all. Um, he was trying to say that Jeff needed consent as he was recording kids that were walking past him as well in a public space. All of which is absolutely rubbish. There is no law, obstru there's, there's no privacy in public or am I missing something? But he certainly has the right to capture what Mm. I'm not going to go public, and I would rather protect the family and the, the family of the deceased. Oh, absolutely, and and I I I, I get your point there about um, the family's wishes, and the, obviously the members of the family that could be upset by seeing something like that out in public. But Jeff is not that type of person. Um, I don't know that at the time. You may not know that, but there's also no expectation of privacy in public, and if he even if he did capture it. So what it is within his rights to do so? If he was to pu you know publish it up on YouTube, then I'm sure they have copyrights or some sort of legislation saying they're not allowed to post something like that anyway, and they would you know take it down under some regulation with them. But the point being is that he has the right to do it. He has the right to walk past that, that sidewalk if it's not closed. And the officer was saying that he was trying to close the sidewalk, and yet it, the road wasn't closed. People were walking clearly past the crash scene. He was taking issue because Jeff had a camera in his hand. Look at that, more people on the closed footpath. Yeah, they don't have a camera filming everything. Well, though, there's, so, there's no they? uh, reason to stop me. The lady doesn't have a camera trying to interfere with hey, investigation. There you go. That's not acceptable. I suggest you go online and, and watch the video. It's nine minutes long. Jeff gives you a Google map layer of where he was, what happened, point by point, and you can see how that man acted. It does not make New Zealand police look very good at all. And I'm all for, you know, showing the good and the bad. Unfortunately, I haven't got your first name. Mark. Uh, Mark, was it? Yes, Mark. Mark, um, it's very hard to say. It's a case by case. You may believe you have the right. Well, I do. I know I have the right. It oh, would be... Mark. Yeah. I never, I never interrupted you. Just let me have a date, please. By all means. Thank you. Um, I believe you have a right. But at the time, uh, the policeman might think he has a right too to protect the privacy of a deceased person. And that can't be worked out straight away then and there. Sure. If that wait, wait. And then you have a camera plate poked in your face, you start to feel a bit threatened that someone may see something that the dead person may get to the family before the family has been contacted. Okay, go ahead. Well, I mean, in response to that, I'd say he wasn't sticking the camera in anybody's face. He was across the road from the crash scene. Um, I didn't realise you were there. 
well, it's because I could see the footage that's on YouTube. So, I mean, I, I guess I'm going from the fact that I've seen what I'm talking about and you yet to have seen the video to know what I am talking about. Would you like to um, come and meet those and talk face to face? Oh, I'd love to. I'd love to. I find it hard to talk to you on the phone. Yeah, sure. To me. Yeah, no, that's all right. I'd, I'd, I'd much prefer man to man than, than over a telephone. When's a good time? Sometime next week. Sure, you tell me. It will give me a chance to look at the uh, the video. Yeah, absolutely. And get, the, and get some reference for it. Sure, What's sure. What's your mobile number? Um, you can contact me on O. Mark, we're going to continue the. I have to check my roster. Sure. And I'll phone you on the mobile. You'll give me to make it time next week. That sounds fantastic. Okay, Mark. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. G'day everybody. Well, it's been a couple of weeks since I rung Steve Samuels at Mount Wellington Police Station and it's been a couple of weeks since he said he was going to call me back in a few days and arrange the time to have a face to face to discuss CP89's behaviour towards Jeff Mackley and to try and help them understand that there's absolutely nothing wrong with recording in public. Hey mate, how are you? Good, good. Um, a couple of weeks ago I spoke to a Steve Samuels. Yes. 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 Um, he was going to call me back and make an appointment time to have a face to face. Um, he hasn't done so, so I wanted to drop that into him with some relevant information and the office still there for him to contact me and see if we want to have a chat. I'll leave that with you. Do you want to get him now? Or? Well, I don't have the time now, that was the whole point of him ringing me to make it. Oh, okay. Yeah. But if you can drop that in, that's just some relevant information. It's all to do with photography in public, basically, and CP89 overstepping his rules. So, that's that information dropped off. The bull is still in Steve's court. Whether or not he wants to respond to the information or not, I've done what I can by notifying him. He knows the issues. On August 12, 2016, Steve Samuels wrote, Mark thanks for visit to the station. Since we have last conversed over the phone I have obtained further information and it leads me to say that there is no use in you and I talking. This is mainly due to the fact that the member you speak of is not one of my staff and you would need to speak with his supervisor. Leave the scene. I'm asking you. CP89. 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 You the Mount Wellington Police Station. You this is mainly due to the fact that the member you speak of is not one of my staff and you would need to speak with his supervisor. SS. Steve Samuels. On August 17, 2016 I responded with. Greetings Steve. You're welcome, since you have chosen to not follow through with your statement of making a time to have a face to face, and now after being chased up and supplied with relevant information in re of recording in public. Do you now comprehend or understand that recording in public is perfectly legal and lawful with few restrictions? As you are senior sergeant I would expect as notice to principal is notice to agent, and notice to agent is notice to principal, that yourself and MT Wellington Police Station staff are now informed slash educated better. Should any member of your staff or any officer for that matter of any police choose to obstruct or trespass on any man or woman's right to do such an activity in public you will have no plausible deniability of these facts now in your possession. You seem to think that beliefs are reasonable justification for actions of officers, whereas I use facts to back my claims. What information have you obtained? Or is it secret? Your statement that CP89 is not under your supervision and is that he was from MT Wellington Station conflict with each other, as you are now using this as a reason to pass the hot potato, so to speak, perhaps you could be so kind as to inform me which station CP89 is from, and who is his supervisor. Whether you chose to be a man of your word and follow through with what you say, or instead chose to just pass the buck is up to you, it only shows the true character of a man. To clarify, I require from yourself the name of CP89's supervisor and which station he is from as now you are claiming he has given false information. So I can make sure he is properly informed of his trespass. Should you chose not to supply this, I will pop back in at my leisure and seek further information from MT Wellington staff, with cameras rolling, 
as according to CP89 he is from there, and you have not supplied any information to the contrary. Why have you not supplied any information that can help? If you see no use in ourselves having a face to face, why say so? Is there new information that would deter you from having such a meeting, in the public's, your employer's, interest? Are you happy to accept one of your staff repeating the actions of CP89? And being sued for it? At the cost of the ratepayers? I am certain I can think of many, many more questions, but I shall chose not to at the moment. Below are the links to our conversation, and my visit as well as thoughts in this matter to date. A third part will be up shortly of this correspondence. I do not understand the warning at the bottom of your email, I am not legally trained and do not comprehend section 50 of the Policing Act 2008. Notice, all correspondence and interactions between myself and any public servants will be published on multiple websites for public purview to ensure maximum accountability for those acting as such. Have a fantastic day. Sorry, I didn't quite catch your name. What was that? Oh, Kim. Kim. Hi, Kim. How are you? My name's Mark. Um, I'm trying to get a hold or track down where a certain um, officer hails from. Um, can you tell me what's the general practice in finding out that information? Um, what? Uh, where are you calling from? Auckland. Are you a member of, just a member of the public or? Well, police, or I'm just a man, but yeah, I live on New Zealand. I'm in Auckland. You called into the media thing, so are you a reporter or? Well, I, I, I've done. I, I hold a YouTube channel, um, and I post many, many police videos. Um, I saw one back in May where uh, a, a fellow YouTuber, I guess you'd call him, um, a man by the name of Jeff Mackley, had recorded an incident of a fatality. Um, the officer that was on scene, or one of the officers, he identified himself as CP89 from Mount Wellington. Um, basically, he, he called the member of public a wally, he obstructed him, he, insult, he insulted him, he uh, assaulted him, he literally forced him to put his camera down in public, which Last time I checked, isn't illegal. Um, and what I've done is I've tried to get a hold of Mount Wellington Police Station. I've spoken to a Steve, well, Steve Samuels, um, a senior sergeant there, I believe. Uh, he's now informed me because on the videotape with Jeff Mackley, the, the CP89 officer identified himself from Mount Wellington. So obviously I contacted Mount Wellington because I wasn't happy about the way that member was treated. Um, now, Steve Samuels, first off after a conversation on the phone, turned around and said he'd like to have a face-to-face. -face. I didn't hear from him for two weeks, so I went into the Mount Wellington Police Station with some relevant information in regards to pub, uh, you know, recording in public, um, and left that with him. Since then, he's given me an email telling me there's no point having a face-to-face, and that CP89 is not under his his command and not from Mount Wellington. So to me, that means either one of them is lying. Either CP89 is not from Mount Wellington and he told Jeff Mackley a lie on, on record, or Steve Samuels is passing the buck. So I'd like to know where CP89 hails from so I can go into that station, speak to his superior, and make sure he's squared away about what he did was wrong. Right, okay. Um, is that, is, does that sound pretty clear? Right, yes, I understand. Cool. You don't know how to find out because a police QAD number is three or four letters and then two numbers, and then three or four numbers, three, two or three numbers, so it needs to be six in total. So you're saying the officer gave incorrect information? Um, no, not necessarily. So what happens is, like, on their shoulders, they'll have um, those, probably those four numbers, that's CP89, but... Me, in order for me to look it up, I'd need his initials as well, which make up the first two letters. <laughs> um, okay, okay, so if, if I'm talking to a cop on the side of the road and I don't get six digits from him, I've got no idea of finding out how to get a hold of him? Well, there must be a way. Uh, exactly, which is why I'm calling you guys. Well, I'm, I'm a 
media advice, I'm not really the right person. Well, I mean, I, I've tried contacting Mount Wellington, which is where the officer said he was from, and Mount Wellington is saying he's not from here. So, when I'm trying to find some accountability for that man's clear abuse of power, who do I hold accountable? Because, okay, so because at, at the moment I tried Steve Samuels, who's from Mount Wellington, and he's saying not me. Yeah, so C, P for Peter? Uh, C for Charlie, P for Peter, 8-9. Yeah, well, it, it just anyway, I mean, I, I've already driven to Mount Wellington once with a handful of documents showing, even with New Zealand Police's own website information, saying it's perfectly okay to record in a public place. There is no expectation of privacy with what Jeff does, and he's been doing it for 25 years. Uh, yeah, I, I can understand, you know, upsetting the victim and the family, and I've, I've, I've been down that path with Steve, and he told me a whole lot of beliefs. However, I deal in facts, not belief. There was, there was no gore, and if there was, Jeff Mackley has, in, in previous videos, quite happily blocked out anything that's not viewable to the public, even though he doesn't have to. Yeah, but not about gore. We're just talking about, you know, general respect for the person who's been injured in the crash. Okay. Yeah. You, you realise a dead person has no wish, has, has no rights or wishes, eh? And I, I, I can understand that the family may, may be upset by what's there. But um, that, that doesn't that shouldn't obstruct Jeff's right to record in a public place for public interest, should it? Otherwise, the media shouldn't be recording. It's illegal or illegal, but um, I exactly. Well, it's not illegal. Yeah, there are situations where um, you know people have been a little bit more. You know, well, the only expectation of privacy that I've managed to find in the legislature is in a public changing room or a toilet. Anywhere there, there, where there is an expectation of privacy. Yeah. Standing on a public street, there isn't one. And the police will know that, but their, their thought, I'm just trying to explain what may have happened, and his thought probably is to defend the family of the victim. Sure. I, 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 look, yeah. Honestly, Kim, I get the family of the victim side of things, but I'm going from the standpoint of a member of public doing something perfectly legal and being physically stopped by a police officer, being lied to by the police officer, being insulted, not given the, the respect under Section 9 of the Policing Act that he's supposed to be doing, not acting in... Well, that's the point. I, I've gone through the IPCA in previous times. Sir Judge David Carruthers, the head of the IPCA, tells me it's all a matter of money and time. I even got run over by a cop once and he did nothing. So I find that the IPCA is, IPCA is completely useless when it comes to trying to get some sort of justice. I rather hold people accountable myself, as I can. I mean, I pay their wages, they're a public servant, toe the line. So if, if it is, as far as what may have occurred, I'm talking about what did occur. It's on record, it's on film, what that officer did. It was unacceptable, and I want to hold that man accountable. I do not wish to go through CP89's uh, IPCA view, because... It's useless. It's proven to be useless to me in the past. What I find works better is to give the people involved the information so they know firsthand. Okay. Can I get your phone number, please? Sure. My contact number is. What was your name again, sir? Mark. What was your last name? Oh, I'm of the family Keen, K W E N. Okay. Okay. I'll make some inquiries and um, hopefully get in touch soon. That would be awesome. Thanks, Kim. Okay. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. The V, the V, and that's all, folks.